OK. So for this problem, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is I want to show you how to graph y is greater than 1. Now remember, we've previously learned, oops, we've previously learned how to graph equations. And we've talked about inequalities a little bit as well. But we haven't talked about, we talked about only linear equalities on a, on a, a line graph, right? We didn't talk about them on two coordinates. So what we're going to do is when I show you, Catherine, when I'm going to show you how to graph this, what I want to do is I'm going to use, we're going to go back to um, kind of what we learned before on how to graph equations. So the first thing I want you guys to do is not to think of it as an inequality at all. And let's just graph y equals 1. Let's totally forget about we have an inequality sign. So hopefully you guys remember, how do we graph y equals 1? Well, yeah, well, um, Yes, you can write out a number line, but what I want to do is how I want to know how can I graph it on a Cartesian coordinate. Okay? Yes, you could graph that on a one-dimensional number line, but how could I graph one y equals one on a number line? Yes, Cedric in the back? Because of what? Okay. Well, yes, you got the an correct answer. Um, but what maybe what the process? You could, well, you could think about the x and y intercepts um, a little bit. And because remember, there was three processes that we kind of talked about. Yes, the intercepts, right? You could find the x and y intercepts, right? And then connect, correct? Find the x and y intercepts and then connect. Or you could do the slope intercept. Find the slope or find the y intercept and then use the slope to get to the next point, correct? Or does anybody remember the third one? How do you? Well you, could, well, you could use your standard form to plug it in. Um, you could use your standard form, but guys, you, when you first learned how to plot, you used always a table of values, right? A table of x and y values. And that's the same thing I want to look at. That's the way I'm going to graph this. Whenever I have a, what we call a constant function, meaning y equals 1 or x equals 1, I used to like, I, used, I like to use a table. Because it's very easy to understand what does y always equal? 1. Well, what do we do on a table of values? We pick values for x, right? We usually say like um, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Well, y always equals 1. So it doesn't matter what values I pick, but y is always going to equal 1. And then that comes to the same point. Can y ever equal 0? No. So therefore, am I ever going to have an x-axis, x-intercept, I'm sorry? No, I'm not. So anyways, just like Cedric said, I go up to 1 because at 0, 1 is a point. And then I notice is I have all these points here. So my graph looks something like that. All right? So that's how you graph y equals 1. Okay? Everybody hopefully can remember or get a little use of that. Because that's what actually we need to graph. We're actually going to graph y is greater than 1. However, I just want you guys to understand to graph that, we need to go back to y equals 1. OK? So you, let's graph y equals 1 first. Then let's worry about how to graph this. All right? So now we've graphed y equals 1. It's a solid horizontal line. We used a table of values, and we just plugged it in. We graphed y equals 1. Now we need to understand what does that inequality sign represent. All right, what does that do to our problem? Well, when you guys were dealing with a one-dimensional line, right? And let's say you wanted to graph this on a number line, right? When I graph this on a number line, what did that, y, what did that greater than symbol tell you to do? Was it going to be an open circle or a closed? Closed. Ended up being open. And you, what does actually open mean? Does anybody know? It, it doesn't, it's not a part of the value, right? So this 1 is not a part of it. That's why we leave it open. So all values greater than would be something like that if we were going to graph it on a one-dimensional. Now, we're not graphing it on a one-dimensional. I'm asking you to graph it on a um, two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate. So if y is greater than 1, is, is this line a part of the function? No. If the dot is not a part of the function, then the line is not going to be a part of the function. So rather than doing a dotted line, does anybody know what we do? What would represent like an open circle for a line? Anybody have an idea? Well, you could kind of take away part of the line. Yeah, you could do a dotted or what we call a dashed line. 
right? So whenever you have a greater than or a less than symbol, you're going to want to make it a dashed line. Yes? Could you hold on a second so I'll finish this? OK. So now we always want to check to see if it was um, dashed line or not, right? Then let's go back to our one dimension, because I think these, this is what you guys remember the most. Then do you guys remember, what do we do next? We need to determine our test point, right? Where do we shade? Do we shade it to the left or do we shade it to the right? So here, what we did was we chose a test point. So you picked a point like negative 1, and you plug negative 1 in for your value. And you said, is that true or false? And at this point is what? Is negative 1 greater than 1? No. No, it's false. So where do we shade? To the right. To the right. You always shade where it's true or the opposite side of the false. So on this graph, so we have this dashed line, right? We need to pick a test point. The best test point ever to pick, ever to pick, is exactly 0, 0, exactly. Unless your line goes through 0, 0, then you're going to want to pick another one. So the next thing you're going to want to pick is 0, 0. So all I do is I don't have an x and a y. I can only put in the, the y value. So is 1 greater than 0? Is 1 greater, I'm sorry, is 0 greater than 1? No, that's false, right? So instead of shading down, I have to shade the opposite direction, Chris. So I'm just going to kind of draw these extra lines. And there you go. That's it. That's got it. So what that means is now all the points, just like this is all the numbers on the number line to the right are true, this means all the coordinate points above this line are true. Make this inequality true. Because all points are going to make that um, inequality true. We'll go through an example here in a second with you guys. Please put your phone away.